Okay, Ayush, the question you asked was this here. So we will be given a circuit with capacitors in it, all having equal capacitance, and we have to find the equivalent capacitance between the points A and B. So one way we could uh, go about it is assume some potential difference exists between uh, A and B, and that it results in a storage of some charge Q. So then we will be able to say that the effective capacitance C if is Q by V. So how do we get to that? We would use conservation of charge to balance charge at any junction. So let's assume we applied a positive uh, potential at uh, V and negative at B, uh, positive at A and negative at B. Then your plus Q would flow through this junction, yeah, and it would split here. Okay, but where does it end up? It ends up on C1, C2 and C4. And so I can get Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q4. Similarly, let's say I have a, uh, I'm considering this junction. So what's flowing here? I have a Q1 flowing from here. I have a Q3 flowing from here. And then a Q, Q6 accumulating here. So I can say Q1 plus Q3 is equal to Q6. Similarly, with each of these junctions, I'd be able to get an equation. There are actually only four junctions to consider, and so uh, there will be four equations there. Then we, uh, we need at least two more because there are six uh, variables really, uh, all, either all the charges or all the potential dif uh, differences. Yeah? So now we need two more, so we can consider, uh, uh, consider various loops here and say that the potential differences in any loop is equal to zero. Yeah, so, for example, if I go around this C1, C3, C2 loop, I can say that V1 minus V3 minus V2 is equal to 0. Minus because I'm going in the opposite direction as the assumed charge accumulation. Okay. So, similarly, I can consider another loop and get another equation. I'll have six equations. I'll be able to solve it. But that's not a very wise method of going about it. So let's consider a more wise method of going about it. So here I've just color coded and I've labeled it. So I've got C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6 with different colors. And I've labeled the important the junctions. I mentioned that there were four junctions. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And you can see that they can be rearranged as on the circuit to the right. Yeah. Between A and B, there is C4, which is exactly what this says. Between junctions 1 and 4 is C2. You can see that. Between junctions 1 and 2 is C1. Between junctions 4 and 2 is C3. Between junction 4 and 3 is C5. Between junction 2 and 3 is C6. And so you can see that we have... Uh, change the way the circuit looks. So let us analyze this circuit a little further and paying attention more to the symmetry. So here on the left is exactly what was there on the previous slide and on the right I've made a few changes. What I've done is I have pushed junction 2 in and pulled junction 4 out and you can see now that C1 and C2 have interchanged positions. C5 and C6 have interchanged position. C3 remains as is. Now since the capacitances, all the capacitances have the same value, the figure on the left and the figure on the right should not produce any difference in what is happening at C3. And so we can conclude therefore that the potential at junction 2 and at junction 4 are the same. Because remember, C3 in the right diagram here is actually flipped around. But if there is no difference because these are identical capacitors, then the potential difference V2 minus V4 should be the same as V4 minus V2, in which case they should both be identical. And if they are both identical, then C3 really is not playing any role because the potential drop across it is zero, so no charge is being accumulated in C3. And so we can remove it from the circuit to get this. And now you can see that this is a very, very easy circuit to deal with. 
the C1 and C6 in series, giving you a capacitance of C by 2. The C2 and C5 in series, giving you another capacitance of C by 2. And then you have the C by 2 here, C by 2 here, and C all in parallel to give you a capacitance of 2C.